Hi there! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this sort of iconic looking peppermint spiral. It's otherwise known as like a two color spiral. And this is a little different from the other spirals I've done. I'll have that video linked in the description box below. But it's actually really simple. And there's lots of different projects that you can make with this, like Sammy's shell or Piper the peppermint snake. I'll have both of these patterns linked in the description box below, and I'll share more about them in a little bit. But let's get right into it. First and foremost, you'll need two colors. I'm using red and white in a classic peppermint sort of palette. And what we're going to do is actually hold these two strands together as we make our magic ring. And the way that I make my magic ring is I'm going to hold onto the end of those yarn tails with my ring finger and my pinky. And then I'm going to wrap the yarn around my index finger and my middle finger, reaching back across my hand, and then I will use my pinky to kind of hold the tension as we make the magic ring. I know this is kind of a strange hold, and there's other ways to make magic rings, so literally use whatever method you find easier. The main thing is that we're going to be working separately with these colors, not together. So we're going to grab the red first and pull up a loop, then reach over and grab the red again to chain one. Then we're going to go back into the magic ring and we're going to yarn over or yarn under, depending on which you prefer, but we're going to grab the red and instead of finishing the stitch with the red, we're going to reach over and grab the white now and then pull through to finish that stitch. And this is the most important step. We're gonna do six single crochet into the magic ring, but we're gonna alternate each color. So I'm gonna pick up the white to start the next stitch. And then I'm gonna reach over and pick up the red and pull through to finish that second single crochet. And then you just repeat this, switching back and forth between the white and the red until you have six single crochet in the magic ring. Once you have six single crochet, you'll go ahead and pull the tail of the magic ring to cinch it closed. And I actually had to pull on the other strand of white to kind of get that final stitch to tighten up. But this is what you should have at the very start. Now that we've got our initial magic ring, we're going to continue as if this was a regular magic ring in a single color where we're going to work directly into that first stitch. And the most important thing to remember about this spiral is that you're going to work the same colors into each other. So red into red stitches and white into white stitches. Let's say we wanted to start making a flat circle. So we're going to increase every round. And for this first round, I'll work one increase into every stitch so that we end up with 12 stitches at the end. And you'll see here, as soon as I finish the second stitch of that first increase, I'm switching to the white so that I can work the next increase in white. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. And as a side note, depending on your tension, this first round might be a little bit hard to work into. I keep my stitches very tight, so the initial magic ring is a little bit tough, but it does get easier as you go. So this is what the end of that first round looks like. And you can barely see the spiral starting to form. I'm going to work a couple more rounds of just evenly increasing and then I'll show you what it looks like as well as what the back looks like. Here I've worked only two more rounds and you can see the peppermint spiral is really starting to develop. Now let's take a look at the back of the piece. So you'll see these floats switching back and forth and it is very important to maintain your tension with the changing colors. If these floats are too tight, it'll pucker and make the outside of your piece look a little, little wonky. And if it's too loose, you'll end up with really gappy stitches. So it does take a little bit of practice to get a really even tension when you're floating the yarn across the back of the work. But I do recommend if you're not used to this, then erring on the side of keeping them a little bit more loose because you can always kind of tug on these floats to tighten up stitches. And when you add in stuffing to your project, your stitches will naturally stretch out a little bit. So that is how you're going to create the two color peppermint spiral. And 
I know I showed you how to do increase rounds. The same applies to decrease rounds. You would just do it evenly, making sure to work the same colors into each other. And if you want to do a tube-like shape, you would just work regular single crochet rounds. Again, working each color into each other. And here's a good example with, I'm making another little Piper the Peppermint Snake. So for his body slash neck, uh, it's just a tube and I'm just doing single crochet around. And you can see that the stitch drift is automatically twisting the colors. So you don't need to worry about like adjusting or anything like that. The spiral will happen naturally. So if you want to practice this technique, the pattern for Piper the Peppermint Snake is actually available for free on my blog. I am working on updating this pattern as of the recording of this video, but mainly it's just updated photos and stuff, not necessarily any changes to the actual pattern. Or if you'd like to try out Sammy the Turtle's Peppermint Shell, I will have it linked in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps me out, and subscribe so you never miss another video. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.